Today we're going to talk about a plugin. This one is called the Immerse Virtual Studio by Embody. What is going on? Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. Now, before we jump in and talk about this very cool plugin, if you are new here on the channel, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. And for all of you, share and hit that thumbs up. All right, so let's jump and talk about this very cool plugin called the Immerse Virtual Studio. Now, this plugin is all about mixing on headphones. Mixing on headphones is quite different than when we're mixing in front of studio monitors. Just think of the stereo image, for example, which is quite different. If we take a sound, I can just explain to you briefly, if we take a sound that is panned to the far left, when mixing on headphones, your right ear is not going to hear what is happening on the far left of the spectrum because we don't get that natural stereo bleed. So everything playing on the left side of the spectrum is not going to be heard by your right ear. Okay, so this is when we're mixing on headphones. When we're mixing in front of studio monitors, now we get that stereo bleed. So everything playing from the left speaker is also going to be heard by your right ear and vice versa. So this is the natural stereo bleed that we have. So even if you pan a sound to the far left of the spectrum, your right ear is still going to hear that sound but in a quieter way, you know? So this is the main difference that we have when mixing on headphones opposed to mixing in front of studio monitors, okay? And also the reflections that we get in our room and so on, you know? So what this plugin is designed to do is to actually virtually bring you into a studio space while mixing on headphones which is quite cool. There's something else also that they do that is actually quite impressive. With a single image of your ear, the plugin is able to, uh, to map your unique ear shape with AI algorithm of their own and create your unique HRTF profile, which is quite impressive. And all this to give you a more uh, realistic and accurate listening experience when using the plugin with your headphones. So that's what makes this plugin pretty unique. Now, I can't wait to try it out because I didn't try it out yet. Um, so I need to go straight on Cubase, load the plugin, take a picture of my ear, you know, send it over to the uh, Embody servers, and we'll see what's gonna happen next. Then I'm gonna take the time to try it out myself and get back to you with my thoughts. Okay, let's try this out. Now, I loaded the plugin for the first time. Okay, so now I had to uh, to enter my email and so on. Um, now, what I need to do is to scan that QR code with my app. Let me do this right away. So it opened up a link uh, that goes straight on the Embody website to scan my right ear. And this is what I am gonna do right away. Let me check. I think that's good. Yes, proceed. Chris from the future here. Now, what you just saw, you know, me trying to, to take a picture of my ear was like, you know, hilarious. You know, don't do that. This is not the way to do it. Let me show you the correct way to do it. Once you're ready to take a picture, just face the camera, turn on your side and click anywhere on the phone screen. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Forget about what I did earlier. So it's supposed to take like around a minute. Okay, so we'll see how that is gonna go. Oh, there you go. Success. And then we're gonna click on done. It's gonna contact the server and it's supposed to load my HRTF profile. And there you go, your personalized profile is ready to go. All right, so we're back 10 days later after installing this plugin. And now I took the time to just work with the plugin, test it out with different pairs of headphones, and I'm gonna give you my full impression later on. But first, we're gonna look at the plugin itself. Now, like I said earlier, the Immerse Virtual Studio is a monitoring plugin to be used with headphones. And the goal is to bring you, while mixing in headphones, is to bring you into a pro studio environment straight out of your DAW, which is actually pretty interesting. Now, the way that was done is that they modeled studio spaces by capturing impulse responses from speakers in a pro studio environment. And they also combined this with a frequency response 
response on specific headphone models. More on that later. Uh, but now this is the new version of the plugin that just came out less than a week ago. And this is the Immersive Virtual Studio All Access meaning that you can work with this plugin with any headphone model. And that is pretty cool because they do have profiles, like specific profiles, like I said, for, uh, for headphone models. And this is what we're gonna look at, uh, like we see on top. So if you have those models, you can actually take advantage of the profiles they provide. So if we click on the top left, we have those supported and those models that um, where they have a profile for. So we have the AKG K701 and Q701. And we have Odyssey also, which has a bunch of uh, headphones and that has a profile. And there's also Audio Technica. Um, I'm actually using the R70X, which are open back uh, headphones. And we also have a profile for the M50X. And just so you know, I'm actually going to give them away a pair of Audio Technica M50X for you to win. And also on top of that, I'm going to include, and this is thanks to Embody, I'm going to include a copy of the Immerse Virtual Studio. So you can work with these headphones, with the profile, straight into the Immerse Virtual Studio. Okay, link is down below if you want to jump into the giveaway and get a chance to win this plugin and also a pair of M50X from Audio Technica. All right, so now let's get back to it. Okay, we have also uh, Bayer Dynamics. I actually tried this plugin with my DT770. And uh, we also have Sennheiser. And if you don't have any of those models, you have standard headphones. And we have four different models that we can use as generic models that will fit with any types of headphones. So the first one, it says, select this model if your headphones are not on the list and follow the Harman curve. Model two is for closed back headphones and model three for open back headphones. And there's also one for in-ear monitors, which is quite nice. Then we have these studio spaces they modeled. Okay, so those are actual professional studios. Like Echo Bar Studio A is from Eric Rikers. And now you can actually see the bio, if you want, of the owner of the studio or the engineer that works in the studio by clicking on the page option here on the right. Okay, so we have page one, which is going to describe the studio you have selected. And also page two, if you want to have a, you know, another perspective, another view of the studio itself. And also page three, which is going to talk about the engineer or the owner of the studio. Uh, pretty cool. As far as the speakers goes, we have a pair of Focal Twin 6BE and also a pair of Kali Audio LP8. So the only thing that I need to do if I want to monitor from one or the other, I just switch by clicking on those speakers directly or straight into the um, uh, the settings section, the middle section of the plugin, we can also switch from one to the other. And then we have the Echo Bar Studio B, which is Bob Horn's studio. And this one has a pair of Augsburger speakers and also some Eve little speakers, which are actually pretty cool. Then we have Diamond Control Room from SAE Expression College in California, where we have a pair of Dynaudio BM15A, which are actually the first set of speakers I purchased. 17 years ago. Uh, I sold them afterwards, but you know what? They are actually very good speakers, by the way. Then we also have a pair of Mayer, which are the big, huge speakers at the back of the studio. Then we have our good friend Warren Ewart Studio, Spitfire Studio, um, you know, by our good friend Warren. If you don't know who Warren is and you just came back from a 10 year trip from Mars, just go watch his YouTube channel, Produce Like a Pro, just amazing. If we look at Warren Studio, we have a pair of Focal Trio 11 and also a pair of Gen LX that Warren loves to work with. The last on the list is Music Friends Studio, where we have a pair of PMC and Unity speakers. And again, if you want to look more into the studio itself, you can click on page two and then look at who works in this studio. And this is a Carlos de la Garza Studio. Now, now, when you select a studio environment, you have the main controls that you can work with. So we have a speaker selector, like I showed you earlier, where you can switch from one speaker, one set of speakers to the other. And then we have the ambience level also, where we can add some ambience if you want to, or reduce the amount of ambience, okay? On my side, I'm gonna set that up depending on which room 
I'm actually monitoring from. Uh, some rooms, I'm going to like them a bit more uh, dry and some other rooms a bit more ambient, you know. But I, you know, I tend to stay at the 40%, 30% range. Uh, then we have master gain. We also have access to a limiter that I turn off most of the time. But if you want the limiter to be on, this is where you can activate it. Then we have additional settings. Now, the first parameter is a clarity, which is going to add, of course, a clarity, openness, and way more detail on the mid-range and higher frequencies. And you can adjust that to your taste. So on my side, the level of clarity is going to depend on which studio I'm working with. But in a general way, I set it up to three and it works well. And then we have balance and all of these we can actually activate or deactivate if we want to. There's also the bypass during offline bounce to disk, which you're not going to need if you're using Cubase Pro and you insert this plugin in the control room like I did. And this is actually the best way to do it is to insert this plugin in the control room because it's a monitoring plugin. But if you're not using Cubase Pro and you're using another version of Cubase or another DAW, just insert this plugin on your master bus as the last plugin in your chain since we're only monitoring with this plugin. Now, the thing is, is when you're going to bounce, usually with these types of plugins, you're going to have to bypass the plugin before bouncing your track. However, with this one, they have an option called bypass during offline bounce to disk, which works pretty well. So if that is active, which it is by default, when you're gonna bounce your mix, it's gonna automatically bypass the plugin. So you don't have to worry about bouncing a mix with the plugin on, okay? So that will never happen if this feature is active because you can actually deactivate this feature if you want to. But if you use Cubase Pro, use the control room and insert this plugin in the insert section of the control room. Now on top of the plugin, we have our profile. This is where you activate the plugin. I'm still on the trial uh, version. And you can also load a new image of your ear if you want to. And this is where you'll be able to do so. Automatically, the system will send me a pin number straight to my email. I'm gonna go and get it. And I'm just gonna follow the, uh, the steps like we did earlier and you'll be able to take another picture of your ear if you want to. So it looks like you can upload up to five different ear profiles if you want to. And this is how you can do it. So if you're not you know, too sure about the first one you took, you just go back there and redo the, the full procedure. After working with this plugin for the past 10 days, here are my impressions. First, I mainly use my Audio-Technica R70X, which are open back headphones. I have a profile already on the Immerse Virtual Studio and it sounded pretty good. I also tried the plugin with the High 55s, which are closed back headphones and they don't have any profile on the, on the plugin. So I used the generic profile and also my Bayer Dynamics that I have here in the back, you know, so. So I'm gonna have to say that it is a very interesting plugin. Um, and it does work very well. Now, to be honest with you, at first, I wasn't that sure. I tried other types of plugins, of uh, similar plugins in the past, and um, they sound good, you know? It's, it's kind of a, a different vibe, um, but I never tend to, you know, to reach out for this type of plugin when mixing a song. Um, but now with this one, you know, at first, it was a bit uncomfortable. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you, there's an adjustment period, okay? And that's normal because, you know, you're not used to hear that type of, of vibe with headphones, okay? Um, and this is what it does. It does the job pretty well. It's gonna bring you in this type of studio environment. And I did the comparison by listening to my speakers, my live environment versus my headphones through the plugin. And I'm gonna have to say, you know, that it is very close to what I have here in my, uh, in my studio. But again, it's not the same environment that they modeled, okay? So, but I'm gonna have to say that it does represent a live room environment very, very well. So I also went and listened to the different studios that we, uh, we have available on the plugin. And for my personal taste, the, uh, it's gonna depend on which headphone I'm working with. If I'm working with the HiX 55 with the generic profile, uh, the Echo Bar Studio A with the Focal works very well. That's my favorite one. But when I work with the Audio Technica open backs, now I'm going to choose Studio B, which actually sounds very good with the Augsburger speakers. And there's also the Music Friend Studio. 
uh, with these little Unity speakers that sound very good. So I kind of like this profile also. Um, Spitfire, love working with the focals with my high X 55. The mids and highs are kind of smooth, so it's kind of a different type of sound. The stereo image is actually very good using those focals. Um, so again, you know, you need to experiment with uh, with these uh, different studios uh, to get, you know, the one that you prefer the most while working with this uh, plugin. Now, I decided not to have you listen to some samples, you know, because it doesn't make sense to just <laughs> have you listen on that through YouTube, you know, through a YouTube video. Uh, I would say go try it yourself. There's a 14 day trial period anyway. It's not going to cost you anything but it's actually worth a shot just to try it out and to check if you like this type of plugin. Now, who is this plugin for? I would say someone who travels a lot, you know, that could be a very good tool if you uh, if you end up mixing on headphones a lot or producing music on headphones, but you want to keep that studio vibe and studio environment vibe, you know, that could be a very good way to go. Or someone who doesn't have a studio environment to mix in. Now, the best tip I can give you when working with this plugin is to take your time to reference a lot. Take your time to listen to music, some good sounded mix, professional mixes that you're used to work with and you're used to listen to using this plugin and your headphones, okay? So you get used to that vibe. Because at first, it's a bit weird. But when you take the time to listen to some, some references or old mixes of yours, some music that you, uh, you're used to listen to into this plugin with your headphones, you'll see, it's gonna grow on you and it's like, you know, it's gonna be very comfortable and you actually have the feeling you're in the studio, <laughs> which is quite crazy. And when you bypass the plugin afterwards, after like 15, 20, 25 minutes of listening to music through this plugin, it's like, okay, what the heck just happened? This is when I knew it was a legit tool. But again, you need to reference music when working with this plugin before you start doing some work. Uh, and same when you're, you're going from one studio profile to another, stop the music. Don't go, don't jump from one to another while the music is playing. It's gonna mess up with you. Uh, but stop the music, you know, a few seconds, jump on another profile, listen to it after. And same thing when bypassing the plugin. If you're doing a before and after, of course, it's gonna sound different. But you know, uh, I'm gonna say though that uh, the, the, the vibe that it creates, you know, it actually brings you into a studio environment and it's actually very impressive, to be honest with you. So I can definitely see myself working with this plugin if I'm on the road or to use here in the studio as a second pair of studio monitors, you know, virtual monitors, virtual studio. So this is my take on the Emers Virtual Studio by Embody. Check it out for yourself. You know, the link is down below. Download the free 14 day trial and let me know what you think of the plugin all your comments and questions down below. All right, my friends, take care and see you next time.